Okay, this sermon is entitled, Preaching Hate. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses, all right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 117 reads, O praise the Lord, all ye nations, praise him, all ye people, for his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. Now, a lot of people out there, they absolutely despise hateful preaching. They want everything to be just soft and, you know, mild and mellow. And yet they fail to understand that there's a spectrum of emotional nuances when it comes to preaching. And if we turn over to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, we see that there's a time and a place for hateful preaching. Let's take a look at verse 1, and it reads, To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak. And finally, in verse 8 reads, A time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. Now, obviously, you can't just be loving all the time. And we see an example of this in Psalm 119 with David, how he expressed hatred at times. It reads in verse 104, Okay, through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Anyone who understands the gospel message and understands that we need to be out soul winning, telling the, the lost world how to be saved, anyone who loves the gospel is going to hate every false gospel out there. Okay, let's continue. In verse 128 it reads, Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. Once again, we're supposed to hate the false gospels out there. Now turn over to, to Galatians chapter 3. In Galatians chapter 3, we see that Paul spoke with lividity towards people that were perverting the gospel. And I can picture just a bunch of mainstream, watered-down, spineless Christians out there you know, preferring Paul to be nice, to speak in monotone, when in, in reality it reads in verse 1, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you, this only would I learn of you, received ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith, are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh, have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? Now, he's asking a question, but he's not, he's not doing it with, with calmness, or passivity. Okay, he's calling them fools, He's basically blasting on them because they've changed the gospel. They've made the gospel no longer a matter of faith, but of something that people do in the flesh. And this is the one thing that should elicit, you know, hatefulness and irateness, is when people pervert the gospel. Now turn back to Matthew chapter 23. We see another example of this with Jesus Christ himself going off on the Pharisees. Okay, calls them, you know, blind in verse 4. Let's see, look at verse 13 where he actually calls them names. It says, But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Now this is a prime example of lordship salvation. A bunch of stupid unsaved Pharisees demanding that people obey the law, and yet, they're not going in either. They're not going to heaven either, is what Jesus is saying. He continues on in verse 14. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Now this is, to the average you know, ear, this is hateful preaching. But it's, it's completely justified. It's absolutely necessary. And he's even telling these stupid works-based Pharisees, Pharisees that they're going to hell. Basically warning them, and there's nothing wrong with that. Okay? So there's a time and a place for hateful preaching. And see, what causes it, primarily, 
is false doctrine. Okay, Calvinism, Arminianism, lordship, damnation. And see, I don't understand why people get so offended and so angered by hateful preaching when we have stupid, unsaved devils out there like James White. Just looking at him makes me sick to my stomach. Okay? If that doesn't fill you up with hatred, I don't know what would. And if you don't get, get hateful and, and, and that ticked off over people like this, this stupid, blaspheming, unsaved reprobate is going to split hell wide open, there's something wrong with you. Because this type of hatred is not necessarily coming from the flesh. It's coming from the fact that we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us, and we're supposed to hate every false way. We're, st we're supposed to hate every, every false gospel, this stupid Calvinism garbage, where Jesus only died for certain people. We're supposed to hate that, that crud, because it's nothing but a bunch of blasphemous filth, damnable heresy, and the people that teach it and promote it are on their way to hell, and I say that with, with no apologies. So like I said, there's a time and a place for hatefulness. It's a time and a place for loving you know, in kind and altruistic type preaching, but there's also a time for hateful preaching because of such false prophets and because of such false doctrine. So that's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.